In today's Sharp Saturday video, we're going to revisit the Kephart Knife Mini Series here at Survival on Purpose. And we're going to take a look at the Old Hickory, what do they call this one? The Old Hickory Fish and Small Game Knife, which um, according to them is their take on the Kephart style knife. And as always, uh, the benchmark we're going to compare it against is this Becker BK62, which actually was designed by Horace Kephart and brought back to life by Ethan Becker and the folks at K-Bar. Anyway, we're going to take a look at these knives and see how well this one stacks up to the uh, original, a copy of the original, coming up next here on Survival on Purpose. Welcome back to Survival on Purpose, your home for trustworthy information and gear reviews related to camping, survival, and general preparedness for regular folks. My name's Brian. Thanks for joining me. So, as I said, Seems like I'm doing a lot of whistling on my S's. I'm sorry if that's coming across there, but I don't know why. But anyway, today on the Sharp Saturday video, we're gonna take a look at this uh, Ontario Knife Company, Old Hickory, bird and small game, right? I got a fish and small game knife, which is their version of the Kephart style knife. And we're gonna compare it to this BK62. And before we do that, I'd like to give a big thanks to the folks at Big Daddy Unlimited for making Sharp Saturdays possible. They do so because if you join Big Daddy Unlimited at the link at survivalonpurpose.com slash BDU and for just 99 cents for your first month's membership and you like it and you like it enough to stick around because it saves you money so it's good for you, then they'll throw me a couple of bucks so it's good for me. So if, if you like it and you save money, then I'll make a little money. So that's a win-win. So anyway, that's a survivalonpurpose.com slash BDU. Now let's take a look at these knives. And what I thought we'd do, we're not at the uh, Worldwide Headquarters Outdoor Cutting Edge Knife Testing Facility. We're kind of, um, I thought I would bring you out to a different location today. So instead of the old stump top, we've got the old picnic table top. We're going to take you down here to the old picnic table top. We'll talk about the specs of this knife and how it compares to this knife. And then we'll get to doing a little bit of that knife stuff. Okay, so here are both the knives and we'll just do it. We'll do a head to head here. So we'll start with the original. This is a, uh, again, this is a K-Bar Ethan Becker design copy of an original Harsh Kephart knife, Harsh Kephart commission knife, I guess, that they, Ethan Becker was able to get his hands on that had really not been used. So this is kind of like, he had, a, he had one that was in brand new condition that to use for a model. So we'll talk about the overall length of this one is 9.58. So you can see the overall length of the old hickory is a little shorter at 8.7. So almost an inch shorter. <clears throat> the uh, blade length on the original is five and a quarter and the blade length on the um, Ontario Old Hickory is four inches. So you can see again, a little bit over an inch shorter. Again, this is 1095 steel on the original and 1075 steel on the Old Hickory. The Old Hickory has walnut handles. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, the Old Hickory just says hardwood handles and the original of uh, the K-Bar has walnut handles. The uh, K-Bar weighs 0.4 pounds and the Old Hickory weighs 0.35 pounds. So that's gonna be somewhere in the neighborhood of five ounces. I didn't do the math for the camera. And then you can see the uh, the spine on the, if you can get a close up here, well, I'll try to zoom in. The spine on the Old Hickory is thinner than the spine on the Kephart, considerably so, almost, almost, almost half. And it's also flat all the way full spine, full tang, whereas the uh, Kephart, if you can see, it's got a little bit of a taper to it. Uh, let's see, the other comparisons are, here's the sheath for the Kephart and both the knife and the leather sheath for the BK62 from K-Bar are both made in the USA. You see it fits in about like that. And then the uh, Old Hickory, the, the knife is made in the USA, but the sheath is, as best I can tell, made in China. I actually called them to ask them, and the person I talked to at um, Ontario Knife Company said they thought this was made in China. So there's that. And you can see this has a flat sewn belt loop on back. Yep, okay. It's got a little tag in there that says made in China. So there's that. And this one says proudly made in the USA on back. And it's kind of got a loop, so. But both very functional sheaths. So there's that. And you can see the size difference there. Uh, let's talk about the price of these things. The K-Bar is uh, MSRP of $194. And it's around $120-ish street price. The Ontario, or Old Hickory, is an MSRP of $44 and around $32 on street price. So about a third or fourth the price of the K-Bar for sure. Um, the other big difference that I can see is the spine on the K-Bar is, is got a double, be it's kind of beveled, has a contoured spine, and the spine on the uh, Old Hickory seems kind of 90 degrees. It's not super, super sharp, but it seems like it probably would strike a ferro rod. And we're gonna find that out in just a minute. So let's do, um, 
let's get to doing some of that knife stuff. Okay, so we've already looked at the specs and done some testing on the original. So we're gonna, refer, I'll refer you to that video if you wanna see the performance of the K bar. So we're gonna, we're gonna check the performance of this old hickory. And I uh, used my trusty Agawa or Agawa uh, Boreal 21 saw to cut some um, dead down wood that I found. You can see that this has been on the ground. So you can see the, you can see the kind of the wet area right here and here. So this is just, a, and you can see how wet it is there. This is another example of, of, of why sometimes it is useful to be able to baton with your knife. You can see how the water soaked in around the rim here, but it's still dry in the middle. So, and this is about the length, the, the, this is getting really close to the absolute limit of what I would baton with this knife. But we're gonna try to, I don't have a stump top, but I think this will be solid enough right here between this, the post on the uh, old picnic table to see if we can Get, get some uh, batoning going on. So we're gonna try that now. Again, this is, this is really close to the, to the borderline. And this is really hard, hard wood too. you there see if we can drive you down in some more so we're beating the heck out of this thing this is probably would not be harsh kept part approved um, knife use because he was pretty big on having an axe and a saw with you but you can see split pretty good there and we should be able to get this down a little better now because it's a lot smaller yeah it'll go a little easier so that was again pretty close to the limits of what I would say you want to baton with a knife this size. But I'm gonna give it one more, try to get down where we can carve some good feathers, curls, or whatever you want to call them. Okay, so. I'll say it passed the batoning test. You know what I forgot to do? I forgot to do the redneck sharp test, so we'll just do it now even after it's baton. Um, it didn't feel redneck sharp to me, but let's just see. Okay, I was completely wrong. This sucker is shaving sharp, even after batoning that wood, so give it, give it a kudos for that. Let me get this off of here. Let's see what we can do about carving some curls here. Now I've got that all dirty. Um, and it, cause it's been raining here for about three days now. So I don't know what kind of wood this is, but it's pretty, pretty stringy and hard wood, but should be able to get some curls out of it though. It's got a nice edge, just kind of a full flat ground edge. It does have a little bit of a secondary bevel on it. I don't know what the, uh, what the angle is on it, but it's pretty good, whatever it is. Get those out of the way here. Let's see if we can cut I cut some really some small, tiny ones there for you. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in on that. That is not too bad, I have to say. Pretty impressed with this little knife. Very lightweight, very cost effective. I'm gonna do a little bit of, try some scraping here on this one, carve off a little smoothness here and see how well it scrapes. Just to scrape some wood. And not bad there, but. So here's what I thought we'd do. Since we've got these curls here, We'll go ahead and try to scrape a ferro rod onto these, see how well it works. And then I happened to bring me some fat wood out here just in case I couldn't find any, because you know I gotta have some fat wood, right? Okay, so got myself a ferro rod here. Let's see how well it strikes this ferro rod. I 
say pretty decent, so let's see if we can get us a fire going on here. And I don't, don't want to catch a picnic table on fire, so I'm going to leave it on the stick and see if I can just take it off once it burns. And, oh man, almost, come on now. There we go, so two days of monsoon and still able to get to the center of this wood by that, um, what some people consider a very useless uh, YouTube driven phenomenon of batoning a knife. It actually uh, has proven somewhat useful if you needed to start a fire. So we'll uh, let that go out over here and we'll see how well this thing uh, scrapes on some of this good old golden deliciousness, this fat wood here. Because you know I love me some fat wood, don't you? And look at it, oh my goodness. Why, yes. Yes, indeed. So we'll just take this little bit right here. We just want to see. Just want to see how well it works. Look at that, would you? Would you just look at it? All right. We don't want to burn a picnic table up. But how quickly that struck and how well it burns. Isn't that just a wonderful thing? All right. We'll get you off there. And it's muddy down there, you don't have to worry. I'm not starting fires here. I'm a friend of Smokey the Bear. So anyway, uh, that, not bad at all. Okay, well that was a hopefully reasonably coherent look at the Old Hickory, Old Hickory Fish and Small Game a Knife. This is the Ontario Knife Company version of, of the uh, Cap Heart style knife. And I gotta say, for around 40 bucks, or actually at 30 something bucks street price, it did a pretty good job. I also got my fingers dirty messing with this, with, with this, this wet log stuff, but um, not bad at all. I will say this, uh, let me just show you something. I forgot to, I forgot to really do, a, do a, a, a kind of a comparison with this, but the handle on the old hickory's got these flares right here, and a little bit of a stop here and a finger, not the handle on the K-bar rather, has got this little flare here, and kind of as also flares out here, kind of a finger guard and a little, little shoulder here that you can, you can kind of choke up on if you're doing small stuff and whatnot. And a little bit of a, it flares towards the rear end. It's rounded off kind of. The uh, old hickory is more like an old hickory butcher knife. So it's just, it's just flat. There's really um, no roundness to it. There's a little bit of a finger guard on, the, on the, the, uh, the tang of the blade, but the wood itself doesn't do that. And there's a little bit of a uh, bevel here, but there's no stop there really. Like, like there's no flare at the end like this, but. But still altogether, a very comfortable, very useful knife. And again, around 30 something bucks to around 120 bucks. So about a fourth the price of this one. So that could be a deciding factor for, for some people. You could be exciting deciding factor for me. Heck, this is a, a not a bad value um, at all. So, and, and it comes with a leather sheath. Um, leather sheath is made in China, but still comes with a nice leather sheath. So that's the Old Hickory Fish and Small Game Knife, their Kephart version. And this has been another video in the Cap Heart mini series for Sharp Saturdays. Uh, as always, I'd like to get your take in the comments below. Let me know uh, which one of these, which ones you think wins for you. Uh, we've got a couple more of these to do, and I'm probably going to wrap this mini series up, and then I'll let you know which one I think um, was 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 my pick um, if I can decide. And so anyway, I really appreciate you watching Survival on Purpose. I put out a brand new video every Friday and Saturday, sometimes random videos throughout the week. If you want to make sure you don't miss a single one, I invite you to go to survivalonpurpose.com slash subscribe. Get signed up for my weekly email newsletters, and I'll send you links to these videos and some old videos and other cool stuff because a lot of people have been telling me that they haven't been getting notified when I put out any videos. Hopefully that'll help. I really and sincerely appreciate the support. Once again, my name's Brian. You're watching Survival on Purpose. Remember, survival's not an accident, so be prepared. I'll see you next time.